something. Oh, we are live. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to have with me the uh, neurodiversity and nerd coach, as she calls herself. I didn't say that. Tracy Winter. Dr. Tracy Winter. Welcome, Tracy. Hi, Karen. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to, to talk to you, Tracy, about what's been working with your business. I mean, neurodiversity is such a hot topic, and we're going to share some of the best practices. And, and I think we're coming out of the pandemic a bit. So you can tell us a little bit about that. And I know you got a plum assignment at Tesla, which is amazing, and probably other things that I don't even know about. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your business, Tracy. Okay. So as you said, I'm a neurodiversity coach. And what that means is I like to coach folks who are ADHDers or who are autistic, gifted, dyslexic, dyspraxic, pretty much any of the disses or any combination, because oftentimes they come in combination with each other. So that's what I like. I like these brains that work differently than the average bear. Um, they're just so fun to play in and, and understand new perspectives and um, help them sort of be who they want to be in the world. Um, so a lot of my practice is spent helping neurodivergent folks live in a neurotypical world because the world is not set up for us. And, and I'm one of my clients. I'm an ADHD -er, and I'm quite exceptional with, with some other things. So um, I count me as that. But learning to live in this neurotypical world that isn't set up for these, these you know, outlying brain patterns. Um, and that's, that's what I do in lots of different contexts. And I also think that you are a translator, Tracy, for companies and other people who want to um, use the talents of the neurodiverse people in a way that's going to really serve their companies and their organizations, but they don't understand how to unlock the key. Would you say that's true? I would. I would absolutely say that's true. I think. I think that companies are missing out on some really great ideas, on some really great contributions, because they are not necessarily facilitating the way for people to communicate them. If they don't communicate in a neurotypical way, it's sometimes hard to bridge that gap. And so that's one of the things that, that I talk about with my clients and what I talk about with companies is how can we um, facilitate that so that so that people are in their best space to um to, to contribute the way they want to contribute. I think everybody really wants to do a good job with few exceptions. Um, and so that person who just seems to be annoying or isn't quite fitting in with the team or whatever, if you take it from a different framework of here's how their brain's working and this is what they need to do their best work, um, you know, that's a whole different ball game. And, and I have to add, I get asked all the time, well, why that only for neurodivergent folks to which I say, no, please accommodate everybody, facilitate everybody's best communication, facilitate everyone's best work. Absolutely. Um, this just happens to be the population I'm interested in, and they tend to need more accommodation than the neurotypical folks. Yeah. And, and more accommodation, but I also think like, I think, okay, so we think of Shel Dr. Sheldon Cooper on the Big Bang Theory. I mean, that's the stereotype. I, 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 I cringe a little. I cried at that last episode. I just bawled through the whole thing. Because a lot of them, I mean, a lot of the people, the characters in there were that way. And the thing that I saw is they have so much to give. I mean, their brains are very innovative. They think in different ways. They can bring things to organizations that neurotypical people would never even be able to do. Would you agree with that? I would. And, and really the reason I think the work is important is because I think that the ideas that cure cancer, the ideas that, you know, figure out how to solve world hunger, you know, all of the different big problems in the world are going to come from somebody thinking differently than everybody else has been thinking. I mean, the person who came up with the, um, the, the COVID-19 vaccine transmittal ability to go with the RNA um, is ADHD. <sighs> Like, and they're able, to, they, they bring different concepts together in different ways. So, you know, if you look back in history, there are lots of people who we could look back and go, I think maybe not all the way neurotypical and here's how, and here's why, and this is how we recognize that. Oh my gosh, Tracy, you are working with the leading edge of the leading edge of the whole well, entire world. <laughs> well, here's the thing I would love to be, except they're, they're being held back. So like, we're not getting all those great ideas and we're not getting those great solutions 
Like society's not getting what it could be from this population just by making a few adjustments. And, and we're holding them back so these problems aren't getting solved. And that's really what I believe is like accommodating our neurodivergent folks, figuring out how to get the best out of them, helping them shed some of the shame and, and the things that they accumulate, you know, micro traumas they've accumulated over the years is going to free up that energy to solve the things we need solved. Oh my gosh, this is so great. So what are you doing at Tesla? Tell me a little bit about that. What are you doing there? Um, so I'm doing, so I, I have a few different gigs. So I'm doing leadership development training at Tesla and I'm working with, um, through Austin Community College, I live in Austin, has a grant with Tesla and the state um, to do all of the training. So ACC is training all of the like production line folks, the people actually putting the cars together. Mm -hmm. um, and my work is in uh, doing leadership development training with the next level up. So the folks that are managing the people that are on the line. Um, and it's been Terrific. Like the people I've gotten to work with at Tesla, both the people I'm working with in the in the uh, trainings and also the people that I've worked with to build the trainings are just marvelous people who want to do good work and and are excited to be there. Um, and I have learned so much from from this population that I wasn't used to dealing with. And, and so I just my eyes have been opened so much and I learn every time I go. It's so fun. Honestly, it's just it's just a good time. Now, Tracy, how did that happen? I'm sure every coach out there is saying, how did you get into Tesla? I tripped and fell into Tesla, honestly. <laughs> um, so I belong to a networking breakfast group here in Austin. And one of the women I know from there works at Austin Community College and heard this thing was coming up and recommended me, um, which I think is kind of funny because I don't think she really knew if I was qualified, but she knew I was a coach and facilitator. And so like, here you go. And they took me on and I got introduced to my contact at Tesla and we hit it off just fine. And so the rest is kind of history. So it really is a matter of if I hadn't put myself out there to join this networking breakfast, which is I'm a, you know, Karen, I'm a terrible introvert. I'm a, I'm a wonderful slash terrible because it goes both ways introvert. Um, so going out there and just being like, hey, how are you? Here's who I am is so scary for me. But if I hadn't pushed myself out of my comfort zone to do that, I would never have gotten this gig. So that's what I, you know, for coaches who are not the best at always building relationships, like learn how, do it. You can talk to me about it because I didn't know what I was doing and it seems to be working out pretty well so far. Yeah. And what other results have you had in the past six months in your business? I know we worked together for a while and then um, you're not in a QSI at the moment. So I want to find out what have you been up to? So, um, I, as I mentioned to you in, in April, I, from January to March, quarter one of this year, finally hit my goal, which was my QSI goal the whole time I was in it. But I, but after all the QSI practicing I did, then I hit it. Um, and that was really exciting for me. Um, and it was specifically to just my coaching work. Like I, I put a dollar amount on the coaching work, not on Tesla, not on the ADHD coach training I do, not on any of the other things. So that was, that was thrilling. Um, but I've just continued to have clients uh, roll in. I'm I'm always looking for more. So like, if you know a neurodivergent folks who who need some help, hey, how you doing? Um, but that has been great. And and continuing the principles that I learned in QSI, I think, has been what's kept some flow going. And I'll admit, I have not followed them as strictly as I did when I was in QSI. And I think that might be part of why my flow is slowed. Um, but a lot of the things that I that we figured out for me to do during QSI um, are working. Oh my gosh, Tracy, you are doing so amazing. Oh, and I've seen the results and I, I saw, you know, you got out of your comfort zone, you went to networking events and, and did all of those things. So what has this, what has all of this, these results in your own business and your coaching, what has that difference has that made in your life? The first thing that comes to mind is my confidence level, honestly, because the more you can coach, the more you get better at coaching. If you're not coaching for a while, then doing it is kind of scary. And between that and the teaching of coaching, I've gotten to be a much better coach just doing it over and over. And my confidence level that I can do it and that when people come to me, I'm going to be able to help them has skyrocketed you know, with the number of clients that I've gotten, which has been a result of our work in QSI. Um, so that's a big, big one. Some more financial security. You know, I think I'm not quite, I don't feel stable yet, but I'm also risk averse. I'm not sure what I'm doing this solopreneur thing in the first place, but um, it's gotten better. Um, and, and I think being 
open to trying new things too. And, and one thing that you helped me do is recognize what works for me, not just what works, um, which I should know. That's what I do with my clients all the time. But for me, I was not doing it. So that was key. Yeah. And what would you say? You're an introvert, but you're, you are getting a great deal of success right now. What would you say to other introverts to help them get a similar type of success? Well, first thing I'd say is work with Karen. <laughs> um, the great thing about Karen and QSI is she has a program and she has a way that, that, you know, she's been successful at having things done. And when some of that wasn't working for me because ter I'm terribly awkward at certain conversations, she was like, okay, so what can we do that works for you? That's with, you know, still pushing the comfort zone, but isn't pushing you into the terror zone and, and, you know, not using your best skills. And so doing what works for me, which for me was, um, you know, targeting podcasts that target exactly my clientele, my my ideal client. Um, uh, honestly, Facebook groups. I joined a bunch of Facebook groups and just keep answering questions on there. And people will show up on my schedule and be like, oh, yeah, I saw you answer a question in Facebook. And I'm like, really? That works? But it does. Um, and so my name is kind of floating around out there now in, in my circles. Um, am I answering the question? I don't remember the question. I'm sorry. I'm babbling. No, you're doing great. I mean, okay. what would you tell the introverts out there to do? Join these Facebook group, answer these questions, get on podcasts. Because I mean, Tracy, I want to I want to acknowledge you because I know you put on a little makeup today to even come on to this call. You look yeah. gorgeous. Most introverts would rather be a little more behind the scenes, but a podcast, you don't even have to get on video. No. Well, and and you can pretend like you're talking to just one person and you're just having a conversation. Um, and I was really nervous for my first one. And then after that, it was like, I'm just talking about the stuff that I know and care about. Like, I can do that until the sun comes down. No problem. So that's been really fun. So it, it's out of my comfort, you know, it's pushing the comfort zone. Um, but it was something that I could manage and not sound, hopefully, terribly awkward on. Um, oh, Tracy, you are so articulate. And I've seen you. I've seen you grow. And I've and and this... The person I'm seeing today, you have really become much more articulate about your niche, much more clear on what you're doing. And, you know, we say practice is perfect because you have done the practice, you've done the work. And I'm just, I'm just so proud of you and so thrilled and so honored Aww. that you're with us. I mean, seriously. So is there anything else that you want to tell the coaches out there? Like any tips you want to give them? introvert extrovert how do we how do you grow your business in a way that is true to yourself well karen will tell you this if you go into qsi or even if you did business boost last week but it's really talking to people which for an introvert is kind of scary so start with what you know and ask them to introduce you to someone else so you have that warm connection um i've also gotten involved and met people that have turned into opportunities through um uh, being involved in my, I'm in Texas. So I was part of the all Texas retreat and conference programming board. Um, and I met a bunch of people through there, including going to the retreat, like going and being among other coaches. I actually just got notified this morning. I got accepted into, um, Rice University's leadership development coaching bench. So I get to coach students coming up this fall and that'll be sort of semi-study work. I hope. Um, but they were specifically looking for a neurodiversity coach, too. So, like, I wouldn't have known that except I was sitting in a certain place and this person I knew walked by with somebody I didn't know. And they were like, oh, you need to meet Tracy. She's doing neurodiversity work. And the person at, from Rice was like, excellent. Here's my card. Please come and, see, you know. Um, so being out there. Um, and then also, I think for my introverts, taking care of yourself when you know you're going to be out there, preparing for it before you go out, allowing for recovery time when you come back in. Um, like, and, and knowing that that's just part of what you need and that's okay. Um, so definitely anywhere you can be seen, be heard. Um, you know, I've had some connections through LinkedIn from writing about the things that have, I've experienced, um, that's had some success. So, you know, really being visible, which was a big mindset thing I had to overcome, um, the, which I'm still working you know, you said the work I've done, it's continual, right? It's so true. like, so I'm so, you know, I still work on that, but, but the more visible I am, the more opportunities have come my way. The other thing I would say is get yourself a coach who cares about you. Um, I went to lots of different, different like marketing and businessy coach program, you know, intro things. 
I, I went to so many of them before I went to QBB. And in every one of them, there was a, I've told Karen, there's a high ick factor. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Like that, just the car salesman slimy version of marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I went to one where some guy, like the, the coach convinced some guy in the group to sell his car to pay for the mark. I was like, this is not where I belong. This is not cool. Like, that's just uncomfortable. And when I talked to Karen, after, after I went to a business boost, I talked to Karen one-on-one -on -one and I got the sense that she actually cared about me as a person and as a coach and not just as, you know, somebody who would be part of her group and therefore be a revenue source um, by far. And that has only, that feeling has only increased exponentially because she really cares about the people she invests in. Oh. So get yourself, if it's, whether it's Karen or whether it's somebody else that fits you, get yourself a coach who cares about you. It's so true, isn't it, Tracy? I mean, and you care about your people and you want to be cared about. Yeah. Um, I do want to put a little chuckle in here. So there's something about squirrels with you. And when I was a kid, I'm, I'm going to tell the story. So we used to have like where we used to, on the side of our garage where the um, trash cans were, we used to have to take the trash out after dinner and things. And there was a tree and there was a squirrel that ran up and down this tree. And I was deathly afraid of squirrels. We, we never had pets. We only had fish. So, I mean, I didn't know anything about and I was so scared of squirrels. And Tracy, you posting squirrels all over LinkedIn. And of course, I'm your coach. I want to support you. So I want to like comment on these things. I had to like comment and not without the squirrels. So what is it about squirrels? Okay. So if anybody's seen the movie Up, the Pixar movie Up, there oh, is seen it. Doug the dog is in there. And he will, he gets, he's like the definition of ADHD and gets distracted very easily often by a squirrel. And so he'll be in the middle of a sentence and go squirrel. Ah, that's and that's right. sort of like in the ADHD world, we joke about that. So I say there like, and I've also seen the meme over and over of, you know, I don't have ducks that can get in a row. I have squirrels and they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's how my brain feels a lot of the time. And actually my window is right here and it's right by a tree. And oftentimes there is a squirrel that distracts, like literally a squirrel that distracts me because I love small rodents. So, so that's the squirrel thing. And I'll say to my buddy from my QSI buddy, who, by the way, I'm still talking to every couple of weeks, which is wonderful. And I met, you know, that relationship came through Karen and QSI. Um, you know, we joke about the squirrels and I, I'll say to my class sometimes, okay, my squirrel, a squirrel took that thought. We'll see if he brings it back. <laughs> so it's just, it's that, but here's how much Karen cares is she's deathly afraid of squirrels and she still keeps going on my LinkedIn posts that I do. Each I of them has a squirrel attached to it and she still comments <laughs> and I love her for it. So that's, that's uh, the squirrel thing. It's, 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 it's in the ADHD world that, okay. that we talk about. That. Well, thank you, Tracy. I, I never really asked you that question. Yeah. I want to just say, really say thank you for being here and for sharing your story with the coaches and your tips and I, I just want to, anyone who is into neurodiversity or wants to know more about it, um, Tracy, what's your website? www.nerdcoach. And it's N-E-R-D-C-O-A dot C-H. Ah, all right. We'll put it, I'm sure we'll put it in our, um, in the, in the uh, chat or something here. Uh, there are lots of people that probably want to connect with you, Tracy. I would and love I, to talk to anybody about, about neurodiversity. Well, you know, we'll, we'll chat until well, you have whatever you need. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Tracy, nerd coach, neurodiversity coach. Thank you for what you're doing in the world. And it is my honor to be your coach and to be connected with you. So we'll see you for another interview soon. Uh, oh, by the way, we are starting another QSI um, on July 5th. So if anybody's interested, you can tell <laughs> I get so much in the conversation. Um, if you're interested in being in our uh, QSI, contact me, connect with me. I'm everywhere. So find me and let me know and we'll see if it's a good fit for you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank Have you a great day. Karen. Yep, you as well. Bye, everybody. Bye.